What's up, my name is Technoba here for Troubleshoot, and in today's video, I'm going to show you something rather useful. So, as you know, in my previous video, I showed you how to do something on an Android phone, and I pulled it up on my desktop screen over here, where I could go ahead and record it. If you've looked into screen sharing or screen recording applications, you'll find some free ones, some paid ones, and some free ones with limitations. This one that I'm going to be showing you in today's video simply requires a Windows, Mac, or Linux PC, a USB cable, an Android device, and that's basically it. You'll be able to stream your phone's screen onto your PC's screen, and you can even control it from the PC side using your mouse and keyboard pretty useful. There are absolutely no limitations other than those physical ones added by your phone or PC. The program itself, as far as I know, doesn't have any limitations hard-coded into it. That being said, it's also open source, so if you don't trust it completely, you're more than free to look through how it's made and even compile it yourself. With all that aside, let's go ahead and actually download it and show you how it works. Linked in the description down below, you'll find github.com slash geniemobile slash scrcpy. Screen copy, as you can see, about, display, and control your Android device. On this page, we'll find a preview image, as well as some installation instructions for Linux, Windows, Mac, and a bunch of other things that we can look into later. There's a ton that we can do with the software, and we'll be getting to it in just a moment. I'll be showing you how to set this up in a really basic fashion. Because I'm using Windows, I'll show you that, but of course, if you're using Mac or Linux, make sure to refer to the GitHub page for info on that. Simply look for releases on the right hand side and then open this one over here, either in a new tab or simply click on it. This one over here, Screen Copy V1.16, is the latest version released on August 10th, 2020. Simply scrolling down to the bottom of this page, we'll find downloads. I'll be downloading the Win64 copy. Simply wait for it to finish and then click on it to open it up. Once it's done downloading, simply open it up and we'll have a bunch of files inside of the zip. Basically, you can open the zip with Windows Explorer, 7-Zip, WinRAR, or anything else like that. I'll simply make a new folder on my desktop, and you can call it just about anything. I'll be calling it scrcpy, screen copy. Then simply open it up and drag all of the files out of the zip into this folder over here, every single one of them. Then once you've extracted it from the zip, you can go ahead and delete the zip and open up the folder. All we have to do from here is simply double click on scrcpy.exe. Screen copy. It'll go ahead and open up ADB, which is the Android device bridge, and we'll see this over here. Failed to get feature set, no devices or emulators found. So we'll simply close out of the program and we'll go ahead and plug in our Android device. Before you plug it in, make sure that you have the developer options enabled and you allow the PC a connection. I'll be showing you that in just a moment. After plugging in your Android device, you'll get a pop-up asking if you'd like to allow USB debugging. Simply click Always Allow and then OK. Then we can open up Screen Copy and after a couple of seconds, we'll see our phone's screen. From here, we can click and type to interact with it. How exactly do we enable USB debugging? Well, simply open up the settings, scroll down to the very bottom and look for Developer Options. If you don't see Developer Options, Simply head into About Phone, then Software Info, find the build number, and tap on it seven times. After doing that, you'll see Developer Options are now enabled. Heading back to our main Settings screen, then to the very bottom, we'll find Developer Options. Simply scroll down until you find USB Debugging. Simply make sure that this is on, and then you can go ahead and plug in your phone and open up Screen Copy. Then it'll open it up, and we'll see it over here. Just remember, when you unplug your phone, make sure to turn this off, as if you leave this on, it can cause security issues plugging it into other computers that you don't necessarily trust, or someone else plugging it in. So just make sure to turn this off when you're done. After doing that, simply opening up Screen Copy, we have complete total control of our phone. Opening up Chrome, we can head across to Google by simply typing, and we can search for something. We have complete control of our physical phone, and of course you can use your actual phone itself to go ahead and tap on. Hopefully you'll have digital buttons at the very bottom instead of physical buttons, but if you have physical buttons, you might need to press them on your phone itself unless you find a key combination. So now that we've done that, how exactly do we stop this? Well, simply closing out of screen copy and unplugging your phone, you're done. So let's have a look at the GitHub page and see what other options we have. Scrolling down on the GitHub page, we'll see installing info and then features. In here, we can config how it works. So we can limit the maximum width or height to a specific value by using these commands. How do we use them? Well, there's two ways. We can head into the folder itself 
and type in the command at the very top. So scrcpy space hyphen, let's say M500. This will give me a maximum width or height of 500 pixels. If we run it with that option, we'll have a really tiny phone over here. We can also click at the very top, type in CMD to open a command prompt window in this folder, and then type our command in there. Hit enter, and it'll open up. This time, closing out of it, you'll get dropped back into the screen over here where we can type in some commands. So we can change the bitrate, default is 8 megabits per second, limit the FPS, max FPS, crop inwards, lock orientation, and even record it into a video file. And if you wanted to, you could even disable mirroring while recording your screen so you don't see it, you just record it into a video file. Then we even have the ability to connect via a wireless connection. So connect the device to the same Wi-Fi as your computer, get the IP address in settings about phone status, then enable ADB over TCP IP on your phone using this command. So after I've connected it to the same router, let's go ahead and run this command. Where do we run it? Well, we simply run it inside of the terminal that we opened up in this folder or type it at the very top, ADB TCP IP 5555. Hitting enter, we'll hear a disconnect noise and our ADB is now enabled over 5555. So we'll go ahead and get the IP address from settings about phone status. I won't be showing you this. In my case, it's settings about phone network. Then at the very bottom, IP address. So we'll connect to our device using this over here. So opening up our console over here, I'll type in ADB connect space followed by the device's IP. In my case, 192.168.1.18 colon 5555. Hitting enter, we've now connected to our phone through our wireless connection. Then I'll run SCRCPY, hit enter, and are connected to our phone through a wireless network. It's not connected to my PC, and you don't see the information at the very top about it being connected. Super cool. In order to connect to multiple devices, we'll need to specify a serial number by launching screen copy with this instead of just running SCRCPY. We can increase or decrease the bitrate and max size to better match our wireless connection. So if we'd like to turn this off, which you preferably should, simply close out of screen copy if it's open and then run ADB USB to turn it back to USB only mode. Then I'm not going to use the other commands in here, but we can SSH into it, change the window title instead of it just being the device model, define a position and size, start it in borderless mode, always on top, full screen, Set a rotation, disable control for the phone from your PC, choose a different display if multiple are available, stay awake, turn the screen off, show touches, dis disable screensaver, etc, etc. Then we have a bunch of copy and paste commands, as well as dragging and dropping files onto the phone, etc, etc. It's a really cool piece of software. I think there's one thing I failed to show you, which was rotating the phone, so I'll go ahead and do that now. Opening up screen copy, connecting to our phone, I'll simply rotate my device, and you can see that the whole window over here rotates as well. You still have full control over it. But anyways, that's about it for this video. Hopefully you found something useful in it. My name's been Technobo here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.